Hi guys, at the Tory conference, of course, leaving the European Union came up. And I want to show you two contenders for leader presenting their Brexit credentials. First we had Kemi Badenoch talking about defending Brexit, whatever that means, every day as business secretary. Then we had Honest Bob Jenrick listing off the Brexiteers who have thrown their support behind him. However, will Brexit actually be an issue at the next election? Both seem to think so. Have a listen. Oh, I voted leave. <laughs> and how will, you, how, will you, how will you support, defend Brexit at the next election, given it could be a big issue? Uh, defending Brexit was almost all I did uh, as Trade Secretary over the last two years. I got the sense that we stood on the platform of Get Brexit Done, and as soon as we had left the European Union, people wanted to talk about something else. We have to be focused. Brexit was a long-term plan, and not just a process. We need to make sure that we're using all of the opportunities. Signing trade deals was one example. We have a trade deal with the EU, and there are many more. We did a great one, CPTPP. We signed that. We almost lost it, but thankfully, with the help of ministers like um, Nigel Huddleston, we got it over the line. But there are other things that we need to do within our regulatory system. We now have the freedom to lead where the EU will only follow. So let's use those opportunities. Let's use those freedoms. Let's stop being afraid all the time. We're so afraid to do anything different. We're often you know, deciding policy based on what everybody else is doing. Let's okay. decide for ourselves what we need to do. Okay. I'm just if the Tories get back into power, they could probably do a trade deal on tripe. Okay, so there's so much crap here to respond to. So first of all, I'll get to trade in a moment, but first of all, this idea that, you know, Brexit is a long-term process. <laughs> you know, Brexiteers like Kemi Badenoch were not saying this before the referendum. They were saying, as soon as we vote to leave, we'll see the Brexit benefits, the sunlit uplands. Now it's after the UK has left, it's, it takes a bit of time. Now, unfortunately, there wasn't a journalist on the on stage. There was just a Brexit, sorry, GB News hack who could have asked the question, when are we going to see these Brexit benefits? Five years from now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now? Well, I could answer that question. Spoiler is, there are no Brexit benefits, so you're never going to see them. She also mentioned trade, of course. She was the, uh, she's the ex-trade secretary, and she... <laughs> It's funny because when she says trade, uh, you know, C CPTPP um, and the European Union, what do you do? What did you do to help small businesses import and export? Nothing. They were abandoned. You're talking about let's do trade with other countries around the world. Most trade is with your neighbors. She also mentioned the EU would follow. The EU is setting the standards. Britain now is a rule taker. It used to be a rule maker. If you want to sell into the single market, you have to follow the rules of the single market. If you want to go your own way, then that's just adding more bureaucracy, more paperwork, more regulations for people to follow. There was almost no paperwork when the UK was a member of the single market, but these people seem to think it was a good idea. Now, finally, about trade, before we get move on to Robert Jenrick, on trade, Britain was going to have a trade deal with Canada but the talks broke down over hormone-treated beef and cheese. Now, the Canadians were honest enough to say the talks broke down. Kemi Badenoch said, no, no, there was a slight pause in the negotiations. She refused to accept the idea that the talks broke down. So she was being dishonest with Parliament and she was being dishonest with the public. Who do you trust, a Brexiteer who has a long track record of lying about Brexit or the Canadian government who had nothing to benefit from, from lying about a trade deal that obviously had broken down? But anyway, let's move on to our next <laughs> Brexiteer, Robert Jenrick. Is Brexit safe in my hands? Well, David Frost, Bill Cash, John Redwood, Mark Francois, you know, I could go on. Most of the people who fought most vociferously for Brexit are supporting me, have faith in me, and I hope that gives the membership of this party confidence that I believe in this project, I want it to continue, I want it to be the success that it is not yet, and I'll hold Keir Starmer to account relentlessly if he tries to water it down. So, once again, Brexit was supposed to get done. People voted in 2019 on the back of get Brexit done. So it was Boris Johnson lying? 
when he said he, he'd get Brexit done, we, once again, we have Robert Jenrick saying Brexit is not implemented correctly yet, or it's not done yet. Anyway, he mentioned a few people here, Bill Cash, John Redwood, Mark Francois. I'm not really even going to bother talking about them because they're headbangers. But one name in particular was interesting, David Frost. Now, turn your minds back to the negotiations between the UK and the European Union. David Frost was brought in because David Davis was useless, to put it mildly. So David Frost was um, was the chief negotiator for the Euro- for the UK, going in head to head with Michel Barnier, and what he came back with was, of course, the withdrawal agreement. Now later he was made a lord, so he would become a Brexit minister, and then he was sent back to do the negotiations for the trade deal, the oven ready deal. Now. Boris Johnson, of course, sorry, the oven ready deal was the withdrawal agreement. Later, we had the uh, the other one, the trade trade uh, um, the trade deal. Now, when it came to the withdrawal agreement, David Frost and Boris Johnson presented it as a massive victory for Britain, a, a great deal for both sides. But a year and a half after, when there was a change of government, what was David Frost doing? He was trashing the deal, saying it had to go in the bin. It was a mistake. It was a disaster. He was blaming everyone apart from himself, a bit like Liz Truss. He was blaming um, Theresa May. He was blaming the EU. He was blaming the Irish government. He was blaming civil service. He was blaming the blob. He was blaming everyone. Not himself, of course, the guy who actually negotiated it and the guy who signed it. And here we are back to square one again. We have Brexiteers saying Brexit needs to be defended even though I thought it got done, and that it hasn't been fully implemented, even though Boris Johnson told people that it was. A major problem for the Labour government in negotiating a proper agreement, future agreements with the European Union is that there's a lack of trust. And as soon as the Conservatives get back into power, what are they going to do? They're going to burn down the bridges that Labour have tried to rebuild post-Brexit. And in order to undo that, to show the European Union actually Britain should be trusted, I think what needs to happen is electoral reform. Because it can't be a situation where Labour try to rebuild trust with the European Union and then the Tories get in and destroy that trust. This This isn't going to result in the UK never rejoining the European Union. So if there is electoral reform and you end up having a pro-European party in power, be it the Conservatives or be it Labour, then there's more of a chance that the UK can rejoin. But some massive changes need to take place. Both parties need to be pro-European, not just rejoin parties, but pro-European. And we're a long way from that yet. Now, the two main candidates here, Robert Jenrick and Kemi Badenoch, of course, Brexiteers, but then they're opportunists. So if they see in the future an opportunity to improve their career by suggesting that they're pro-European, then they'll probably do that. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.